All right, now we're going to be switching to uh, the debate part of the forum. Um, we're going to start with the sheriff's position to give you a little uh, understanding and so that we all understand how the format's going to play out. Each candidate is, is going to be given a minute to make an introduction, and then uh, there will be quest two questions asked of each position. The order in which the responses uh, are going to be made will be determined by a random order generator that I'm going to be using on an app on my phone. And then same thing for the second question. We'll start with the sheriff's position. Um, Tracy gets off easy today. <laughs> um, Adam Wright couldn't be here. Um, and I just want to say a few words. Most of us know Jerry Critchlow. He's been an integral part of public protection in Ohio County for many, many years. And uh, I just want you all to keep him in your, in your thoughts and prayers. So can... Um, Say something that you think everyone can hear you. Is it okay if they if they stay seated while while speaking? Do you think those in the back can you, you think I can be hear? loud? I can I can speak loud. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Is that okay with you, Justin? Maybe. It's your show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tracy. So if you want to uh, give a minute introduction. Oh, and also uh, Josh will be our timekeeper. I will have him raise his hand. The timer will start when you begin your answer. And uh, I'll have him raise his hand when there's 30 seconds left, and also when the time is up. And if uh, after the first respondent is answered, if the next candidate would like for me to repeat the question, I'll be happy to do so if you just ask. So, we'll start it up. First off, I want to say that <clears throat> please keep Jerry Critchlow in your thoughts and prayers. He's at a very critical stage right now. Uh, we talked with the family this morning. Uh, Jerry's been one of our icons here in the police for many years, and he was one of my mentors. And uh, just please keep him and his family in your prayers. He's he's at a very critical stage right now. <clears throat> my name's Tracy Baby. I'm your current sheriff. I've been sheriff for seven and a half years now. Um, you know, uh, I, I've been a lifelong uh, uh, resident of Ohio County. I'm a lifelong Republican. Um, I, I have worked here at the sheriff's office for 25 years. I've not gone to any other agency. I've been right here at the sheriff's office. I've dedicated my life to the sheriff's office. A few things that I have done, I, can, I maintain an open door policy. You can come and see me anytime you want. You don't have to go through 15 people to see me. You can come in and see your sheriff when you want to. I've added three new officers to our force since I've been sheriff. And oh boy, I've already I've already used my time up. Many things that I've done as your sheriff, I will continue to work hard. There's so many things that I could stand up here and talk to you about. Uh, I work hard to be your sheriff. I've made the sheriff's office something that it has never been before. We have several things that we have done. The first time in history we've been accredited. That's a huge uh, accomplishment for our office. So uh, without any Further talk, I'll turn it over back over to y'all. We're sorry to have to limit you all, but for the sake of everyone's time and, and having so many candidates, we do have to impose a limit on the introductions and the answers. So thank you for respecting that. The first question for you, Tracy. Public protection is essential for our businesses to be successful. The less offenders we have, the more people we have gainfully employed in the workforce. We know that a past offender is less likely to become a repeat offender with gainful employment or the prospect of gainful employment. As sheriff, what do you think could be done to better transition offenders back into the workforce? Well, we have a new program that the county has started, an ARCH program. I am a big supporter of that ARCH program. As a matter of fact, we have supplied the uh, ARCH program director with a vehicle that we maintain and, 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 and keep up through our department. So anything that we can do to help them to get offenders back out on the street, get them jobs, get them straightened up, help them with their drug addictions or whatever that might be, we're all for that. We, a lot of times people tend to think that we're on the enforcement side, that's our main job, but we also want to see that those offenders get back in our community and they're doing right and, and, and obeying the laws again. Next question. Um, if you are the incumbent, which you, you are, 
What are the policies that you're most proud of and what do you think you can improve upon if elected again? Um, I guess I'm, I'm the most proud of the accreditation for the office. It's the first time in history that it has been accomplished. It sets forth rules and regulations and, and, and guidelines for us to operate the office and to set a standard for our deputies and, and, and put that professionalism at the top of our list. So that, that would probably be my, my main accomplishment, the, the best that I think that we've done there. Uh, I would like to have more officers to be able to answer calls, and I would like to have another drug detective to be able to put on my force to combat drugs. Uh, it seems like when we went through the pandemic that our drug issues went through the roof. Uh, we've slowly, I think, uh, maintained uh, uh, an even kill on that, but I would, I would definitely put that drug enforcement at something else to, to get more personnel to make more rest in the drug field. Thank you. Everyone give uh, Sheriff Beatty a round of applause. Okay, I just generated the random order for the executive candidates for the first question. And the respondents will be in order, Ray Goff, uh, David Randolph, and David Johnson. All right, my name is Ray Goff. Um, I would first of all, I'd like to thank Limestone Bank for hosting this and the Senior Citizen Center and the Ohio County Park for allowing us to come here and use their facility. Um, just like to tell a few things about myself. I, I grew up in Ohio County. I graduated from Ohio County High. Uh, I went on to Western, graduated from there, went on to the Air Force. I served 28 years in the Air Force in a variety of roles from the security forces to a squadron commander to a group commander. Um, I also work for Habitat on the board of Habitat for Humanity and I'm also the project coordinator for the tornado relief. I've been the boots on the ground since the tornado started and we haven't stopped. Thank you. Okay. David Randolph, your introduction. Good afternoon, I'm David Randolph. Uh, thanks to the Chamber and everyone who made this possible. I also am a lifelong resident of Ohio County, born and raised here. Graduated from Ohio County High School. Played basketball, ran track. We you know, bang heads together a lot. Uh, went on to the University of Kentucky. Had the opportunity to walk on the basketball squad up there for two years. A lot of lifelong experiences. Uh, the main thing, I got the crap beat out of me every day, but that's another story. So I moved back to Ohio County. I love this county. This county can do better. That's why I'm running. I believe in this county and I have the ability, I have the connections and I have the mentality to be aggressive, to knock on doors, to make things happen here in the county. And that's why I'm running for office. Thank you. Thank you, Yes, sir. And lastly, David Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chamber. Thank you, Sick Back, and everyone that participated in having this. We really appreciate it. Uh, my perspective comes from serving as your judge executive for the last few years. Um, and in that time, made great strides in many areas. And my strong suit is that um, I know how to get our share of the state and federal money and bring it back to our county through the uh, contacts that I have and the relationships I made with federal and state officials. And uh, if I serve again, we can continue the cross, uh, you know, the progress. Uh, that's what I had to say. All right, now we'll begin with the questions. I've uh, re-randomized the order, and this time it will be Ray Goff, David Johnson, and David Randolph. Ray, first question. Every one of us wants this county to be a better place to work and live. While industries across the spectrum cite the availability of a skilled workforce as the top factor in their location decision, Ohio County lags behind the state average in population with at least a two-year degree. 
What do you think county government can do to make Ohio County a more attractive place to do business? It's a great question. Uh, I'm off. I mean, I've worked in the vocation trades. I, I currently am on the ground building, and vocation trades are a big part of our uh, our industry. And I think a lot of the industry that comes to Ohio County, they're looking for trades people, vocation, and technical skill training type folks. Uh, we don't have anything past post-secondary here in Ohio County, I'd like to at least look at those those uh, jobs that are marketable. And I'm not discounting college education. I mean, there's, but not everybody in the school system needs to go to college. We have, uh, we just have a lot of folks that have a lot of the skills and industry is looking for those, those trades, technical skills, and uh, those in the vocational area. Thank you. I just got a comment from someone uh, joining us online that it was hard to hear the candidates. So I think we're okay on time. Uh, we'll, uh, if, it's all, if it's all right with everyone, I think we'll have each candidate come up to the microphone for, for the sake of everyone watching at home for the remainder of the answers. <clears throat> so next up is David Johnson. Would you like for me to repeat the question, David? Please. Uh, yeah, that's right. Every one of us wants this county to be a better place to work and live. While industries across the spectrum cite the availability of a skilled workforce as the top factor in their location decision, Ohio County lags behind the state average in population with at least a two-year degree. What do you think county government can do to make Ohio County a more attractive place to do business? Uh, thank you, Chase. And I will say what's ongoing and which we'll continue to do. We're working with OCTC. Uh, our county the fiscal court actually funded a, a, a pretty good chunk of money for the expansion in uh, Owensboro, the OCTC. So we are doing that. And we had a person work uh, full time working on educational attainment and, uh, and to make our county a career ready county. And we are working on that. And uh, that's pretty much the, what we can do to it. And, for, and we're also working through the high schools to try to promote people going into those trades that will get them a job. Lastly, David Randolph, would you like for me to repeat the question? Please. Sure. Every one of us wants this county to be a better place to work and live. While industries across the spectrum cite the availability of a skilled workforce as the top factor in their location decisions, Ohio County lags behind the state average in population with at least a two year degree. What do you think county government can do to make Ohio County a more attractive place to do business? Thank you for the question. And my response to that is God made all of us differently. You know, we can't all be in the White House. We all can't be senators. We can all can't be judges, but everyone has a special skill or craft that can be honed into something wonderful. Uh, I'm big on education, but I believe too much is given, much is expected. And there are a lot of people who don't have that ability and if they're lagging behind because they can't find a job, because there are certain standards that are set. I think the bar is set too high for some. And I believe that if those bars are lowered into a person's realm of what they can accomplish, they can get a, a high school diploma, a certificate, they can get a good job, and they can contribute to their community and that's how you get those numbers up. You got to go by testing. You got to go by what a person's ability is. And once you find out what their abilities are, you set those goals intact for those people to rise up to those goals. They can graduate. They'll feel good about themselves and they can become good, productive citizens in this county. And that's what I'm going to push for. We are behind. Thank you.
All right, and for the last question, the order of response will be David Randolph, Ray Goff, and David Johnson. This question will be asked a little bit differently, whether you're the incumbent or the challenger, but the premise is the same. If you're the challenger, how would you improve upon the current administration's policies and practices? And if you are the incumbent, what are the policies that you're most proud of, and what would you improve upon if elected again? Thank you for the question, Chase. Well, the first thing I would do is I believe in confidentiality, uh, especially for county employees. Uh, I just believe that they should be protected. Uh, I, uh, if elected, or when elected, the first thing I would do, I would separate the personnel departments and things like that. That's the way it's set. I would move the personnel department in a different area, maybe even a total different building. Therefore, their rights and things are protected. If a person has a personnel issue, they don't feel comfortable going where the offices are right together. Even if, it, if when I'm elected, if, if the complaint is against me, even if it's against me, their privacy should be protected. And the way it's structured now, there's no protection up there. And an employee, if they have an issue, they don't feel comfortable going up to the second floor because the offices are together. And my concern would be always the residents and the people of Ohio County, the employees, their rights and things should be protected. I would separate those offices where they could go in knowing that their rights, their privacy is protected and foremost in Ohio County, they will come first. That's what I will do. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Goff, would you like for me to repeat the question? Yes. If you were the challenger, how would you improve upon the current administration's policies and practices? Uh, yeah, or you could also say, what do you think the current administration is doing well? Uh, and what would you change? Well, I, I think uh, the county's doing a lot of things well. There's a lot of things that we can do better. We, there's always room for improvement. Uh, and I did owe David's uh, comments about uh, we don't need to have an environment where our employees feel intimidated or they're controlled to some extent. Uh, I know there's there's been some movements about moving uh, our OCDA into the community center. Uh, I'm totally against that. If I'm elected, I think they should be a standalone out in the community, boots on the ground, promoting our economic and our uh, our economic activity here in Ohio County. Thank you. Lastly, David Johnson. As the incumbent, what are the policies and practices that you're most proud of, and what would you improve upon if elected again? What I'm most proud of is that any one of you comes to me, I'm going to do my best to help you. And our department people, I insist that they do the same. Um, you, if at all possible, anyone comes to something, you say yes, you do your best to help them, and you never say no at first until you, uh, until we completely research it and see if there's any way possible that we can help. And sometimes we surprise ourselves. So that's the thing I take the most pride in. The other thing I take the most pride in is that uh, my office, I know where the uh, federal and state money is. And if you notice, we keep it rolling in all the time. Um, and the only little comment I wanna make is uh, there are no plans to move OCDA to a different place, but we have a really nice building for them and a real nice setup, so we don't plan to move that. So uh, I'm gonna throw that in there. But, uh, but the thing I'm proudest of is that we try to help everybody. Thank you. Well, that's all we had as far as questions. We're ahead of time. We expected this to go longer. 
Uh, we weren't anticipating on doing closing statements but because of time, but since we have the extra time, I think we should allow each candidate to make a couple minute closing statement. One minute, maybe? Okay. We'll just start down at the end and work our way this way if you'd just like to make a closing statement after hearing some of the discussion. Well, and the only closing statement I have is that I, if I get elected, um, I've got a very good work ethic. I'm not lazy. I'm going to be out there working for every citizen, not only for the 5th District, but for the whole county. I want the county to go up, 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 up. I want it to, if I get elected the four-year term, I want it to leave it better off than where I've got it. And that goes for economics, infrastructure, I mean, every aspect of the fiscal court. Leave it better than the way I found it, and I will do my best. Um, if anyone needs to get a hold of me, my number is 270-256-6765. Thank you. Well, I, all I've got to say, if you elect me again, we'll continue the progress in Ohio County. Um, I want to see a lot of things done, the same as all of you do. And uh, we have made great strides in economic development. We've made huge strides in the uh, uh, roads, bridges, which is, I said in my state of the county, I like to get those done so we can change the subject entirely away from, you know, from that subject and move on to the other things. But we're still working strong on them, have a lot of funds identified and on the way to continue to improve our, our infrastructure. And uh, it's, um, it's state effort and everybody's efforts across the country, but the state, in the state of Kentucky, uh, there has been awarded contracts to provide broadband for everybody in the county. Uh, and so uh, that's a good thing. Glad you mentioned that because I was about to talk. That's one of the big issues in, in the 5th District is our internet. We need to have internet all across our county and we're, we're lacking in that department. But he's he's made some connections, I hope, that will uh, help that help that get better. We do need a good, strong internet. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of room, I think, for more small business opportunities out in the community, and including our family farms. There's a you know, agriculture brings a lot of money into the state of Kentucky. Purdue brings a lot in, and then, of course, we got uh, uh, you know, tobacco used to bring a lot of money in for us, but we need to go agribusiness to bring in more money for us, and I think we need to work on that. Uh, he, our, he did mention our road. That's very important. Uh, for several years, I was also on the water district, and our water lines, and we have a lot of water lines in Ohio County, and I'm very familiar with that, and and I, and I, I sat on that board a long time. And I was treasurer on that board, and I realized how important that is, and we need to make sure we support uh, that. We haven't mentioned uh, the jail yet. We need a new jail in Ohio County, too. Our jail is pretty old, and uh, we need to work on that and support that program anytime we can. Uh, I do want to thank the, the, the senior citizens uh, that work here, Brenda. Brenda Rimpro and Judea does a fine job here, but we need to support that program all we can because I believe the senior citizens are, are underserved. And I also want to support the youth in Ohio County and make sure that, that the quality of life is good for them and, and uh, our veterans and senior citizens. Thank you. Well, uh, I mean, this is Chamber of Commerce, and we're talking about economic uh, development. That's that's one of my agenda items. It's not the only one, but uh, economic development, our broadband internet. Like Dwayne said, we've we've got to get that going. You can't have economic development unless you have broadband, internet, and cell service. If you live out in the rural areas, you don't have cell service, or it's very limited. I live out in the rural areas, and the cell service. I know there's fiber optics have been put out in the county. It hadn't been put out in all areas of the county, but they're, they have to run the lines. We just need a ISP provider to connect that fiber optics into the homes. And that's what we got to get 
and I hope that's coming. If if it's not, I'll be if I get elected, I'll be working on that. Uh, recreational development. A lot of young people just feel like they've been abandoned. There's not a lot for young people to do here in Ohio County. The wages are kind of stagnated. They're having to go to other counties to find work, better paying jobs, and we're losing a lot of that workforce here in our county. We need to keep those those kids here in Ohio County working, living, and spending money here in Ohio County, not spending it in Davis County and Warren County and all these surrounding counties. If they're working in other counties, they're gonna be spending money in those other counties. So I, <clears throat> I want to uh, do that. Uh, I just feel like I deserve to be elected because I've got ex a lot of experience working with state and federal government while I was in the military. And uh, I've got a lot of skill sets that I can bring to the table. Thank you. Well, I forgot to say that big tall guy up on that screen every now and then. I, I take credit for him too, Travis Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't getting lost here. Okay, look, I'm not a politician, and I hope and pray that that label is never put over my head. I'm just a common guy here from the county. I love this county. You all are my people. My people are your people. We're one. This county needs to go in the right direction. There are things that should have been quick fixes a long time ago, and they're not being fixed. Like I said, I'm just gonna tell it like it is. We can do better. Another four years of, of what we're doing is not going to get us anywhere. It just won't work. Jesus teaches us without vision, the people will perish. We need vision. We need someone who will go knock on the doors and to get this county moving. I agree. We need our young people to stay. I talk to them all the time. There's nothing to do here. It's true, they go to other counties to spend their money and that money should be spent here in the county. We need visibility. We need direction in the right way. And everyone needs to be, I feel like he's asking me a question. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I just know that the veterans are important to me. I just spoke with the veterans here a couple of days ago. There's nothing more precious and valuable than our veterans who have laid it on the line for their country. And I'm going to always be in support of the veterans. And most importantly, I'm going to be supportive of the people. I'm going to listen to what you have to say, north, south, east, and west of the county. And yes, we do need a stronger internet system, but it doesn't take 12 years to get that we have to be productive and aggressive, and that's what I'm going to do when elected. I want when people from Ohio County go all over the state, and you say you're from Ohio County, people are gonna say, oh yeah, I hear y'all doing a lot of great things. Why? Because we're gonna be productive, we're gonna show diversity. That's how you get the money. That's how you get the attention. And I have the ability to put Ohio County on a map, and that's exactly what I'm going to do when elected. Thank you. Your sheriff has a huge impact on economic development here in the county. Uh, when businesses come looking for a place to build, and you know we're in a great crossroads here with two interstates. Uh, as a matter of fact, a corridor to the I-65. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to show as a sheriff's office that we care about our community, we enforce the laws, we make a safe and, and better community to raise families in. That's what these businesses come here to look for. They look for a place to raise their families, a 
a safe place for their employees and somewhere for them to grow. Uh, I feel like I've done that as your sheriff. I put together a great team of deputies. We work hard. Um, we, we've had, you know, two bank robberies since I've been sheriff and one um, uh, that broke into a pharmacy. We have solved all three of those crimes. They were solved, they were arrested. I think when people think about crime and coming to Ohio County, they know we're serious. We work hard at solving those crimes. And I think that makes for a better community for, for us to live in and a safe place to raise our families. Thank you. That concludes our candidate forum. I again want to thank all the candidates, uh, win or lose. Uh, thank you for your willingness to serve and, and wanting to improve the, the status of our community. My final comment uh, before I bring Sarah back up here is just get out and vote. Please, please, please exercise your right to vote, uh, regardless of who you're voting for. Thank you.